This podcast is brought to you by Gamefly.com. Let me tell you something. I don't like watching the fucking news. But if you watch 60 Minutes and on Real Sports, you're pretty much caught up for the fucking month. If I watch Real Sports, stories. I throw a couple Bill Maher's episodes in there. That's all the news you want. You don't need to. <laughs> you really do. Fucking, I watch Bill Maher. I learn shit. I learn that we're at war, how much <laughs> we spend. Then I go out and talk shit to people. It's not because I read it or, you know, because I'm repeating what fucking, you hear. Yeah, yeah, you know, I love Bill Maher. If you watch Bill Maher, Real Sports, let me tell you something. When was the last time you watched an expose on any sport that was bad on Real right. Sports? Whether it's the fucking kids in right. India that they starved, the horse races, that episode. What? Remember when they showed the episode of the fucking kids, the jockeys in they India? They starved them to make them lighter? To make them lighter. Just shit that you've never <laughs> oh. even thought of. Like yeah. You're like, fuck, I want to starve my kid, man, I'm a jockey. Yeah. If he could fucking win a mm. horse race. Just everything they talk about. Tennis. They make tennis, golf. Anything they talk about on real sports, you're like, wow, I really need to know that about that particular sport or that particular person. When you watch 60 Minutes, it cuts everything short also. It just gets to the point for 20 minutes. This guy's got 20 minutes to talk about whatever the fuck he wants to talk about. They did an expose on some guy who left Goldman Sachs, a VP. And he just said, fuck Oh, I saw about that. Did you that. see that? I didn't and see very that in 60 Minutes, but I saw it online. Very the interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then they had something else about Obama. Huh. You know, it's getting close to the thing. I didn't watch that shit. But the first thing up front was about the medical marijuana in Colorado. Oh, what are they saying? And their stance oh, on it. Yeah. Like, they, they went to Boulder. They went to Denver. Denver's Who got 280-something oh. stores. And my numbers may be wrong. Wow, I don't want to get 20 fucking Gmails. Joey, it was 266. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how these motherfuckers are. <laughs> my point being, it's 4 to 1 against Starbucks. 4, four to 1 against really? Starbucks in that city. There's a medical marijuana wow. destination every eight doors. It's, again... Eight, six, five, does it fucking matter? Uh, (laughs) uh, uh, uh. So, and they went to this one company who's the the mafia. Yeah. They're pretty much the mafia. Now, the guy uh, wrote the law, wrote, he had been studying it for the last whatever, Mm -hmm. and he wrote it to a science. And then his partner opened up, bro, they got everything. And they have everything to milligrams, like how much the edibles are fucking amazing. But how they have it, Colorado can't buy weed from other people like here like before I went to the store yeah. and I got a phone call and I was watching the weed store and I was watching the guy getting out of his car the trunk I'm like sitting there going 10 years ago I would have been hitting this guy in the head right now right. Like, I watched the whole thing go down yeah they're right they just do it casually right they just do it casually in Colorado you have to grow your own weed on the premises or have like a warehouse adds a different patois to it adds a lot more money A to Z uh-huh. the profit and just that they want to know where the weed came from. People have to come in on a weekly basis and test your marijuana. Yeah, they say you can't grow it and have it in the same spot. Yeah, very interesting. Oh, really? Felicia, you have to grow it and sell it. Yeah, you can't Colorado's 20 years ahead. Like, they said no. And then they asked the dude, like, so what do you think? You, you're not working with a federal law. You know, you're working against the law. And he's like, listen, we know where every seed is. In Colorado, they have to they have to account for the weed from the seed mm-hmm. to the motherfucking bone. Oh, wow. Very, I mean, real interesting. This is like oh, wow. geniuses yeah, they said, fuck it. This is how right. we're going to do it. Because if Colorado. you buy it from other from, from growers, then you have no idea what's no in it, really. No idea what you're getting. You don't know what kind of pesticides they used. Wow. When I lived in Colorado when I was a teenager, one of my best friend's mom in the little town that we lived owned the local head shed. And the fact, it was called the head shed. And we used to play in there all the time. And it was really loose on that kind of stuff. Like way really? back then, yeah. Yeah. How when did you live in how did you live in Colorado? How old were you? Um, I was from like the age of like twelve to eighteen, nineteen. What were you doing there? Your family? Yeah, I moved there with my family, yeah. You lose your virginity in Colorado? I lost my virginity in Colorado. Wow. <laughs> nice. That's titties. right, at the foot yeah. of Pikes Peak. How old are you? 16 and a half? I was uh, 17 and a half. Nice. Yeah. At the where? At the, in the uh, the woods by Pikes Peak. What? Yeah, yeah, at a party. Kager. In the woods? Like with your, <coughs> like, huh? like with your ass on a stick? There was a stick in my ass, yes, <laughs> when it happened. <laughs> These Colorado girls are tough. They're not a yeah. fuck outside, yeah, We dog. don't fuck around. Well, we <laughs> they do. They fuck but... outside in the snow. Fuck outside. They don't give a fuck, dog. 
This is all new. You got to take them to a hotel and all these shit. These guys are soft. When I was a kid, you could fuck them outside by a tree, <laughs> under a fucking car. When you, you know, like all this shit now, you look at a car today and they're all economical. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody buys an economical car. Yeah. In the 80s, people bought a car and they'd get a piece of pussy back then. Oh, you, you looked at that back seat. The gigantic back seat. The gigantic back seat. Then they had the 80 40. Wait, the seat goes down, mm-hmm. and you could stick the head in there and bang them fucking all like, you know what I'm saying? Like a slinger. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna let your tongue yeah. out? You do the whole fucking so thing. So uncomfortable how you gave me complete eye contact as you said that. <laughs> <laughs> you like that huh? you what seat goes down? You put their head in where? In the fucking trunk like a savage. Oh, that like all the way down like that. Head. And you put the oh. fucking leg up and you just <laughs> bang them away. You got so one of the seats goes down yeah. and you can go to the trunk and uh, they stick their head those. in the trunk. Jesus. A soldier, they don't see nothing. <laughs> they just see a fucking spare tire the whole time. Oh my God, at that point, I'd they, rather get fucked outside. That's called the Jody <laughs> yeah. Foster, you know what I'm saying? When you get fucked and you see a spare tire in the trunk the whole fucking time. I fucked in my trunk once at the Thursday promenade. I told you. This is a filthy You fucked in your trunk? My ex, yeah. I was like, oh, I got turned on. She's like, let's go in the trunk right now. I was like, seriously? She had one of those <laughs> latches. It was like a Jetta or something. Uh-huh. The glow in the dark latch from the inside. So you just wow. go in like the, the cuddle position and just pop it a oh, bunch of times. You guys are a bunch of trunk fuckers. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. You gotta go somewhere private. Sometimes you gotta shoot a fucking... Sometimes we gotta shoot a bird off the roof. <laughs> you gotta sling that fucking helmet sometimes. Wow. <laughs> When I was in high school, I used to eat pussy in cars and shit like that. Really? Yeah, because, you know, I had nowhere to fucking I don't think I've ever eaten that. What? I ate a pussy. I ate some girl's fucking monkey in a car once when I was 18. I wanted to eat this girl for like four years. Really? I wanted to be the first guy to eat it. Like, I had it in my mind. I was was fucking focused. I used to talk to this girl on the phone for years, and I was secretly in love with her. One night she agreed. I just asked her, I said, what are we going to do this? Do what? You know? And we went to eat and we started talking and she let me eat her monkey, Felicia. It was tremendous. <laughs> right behind a movie theater. Stop in the looking car. me in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I talk while I'm looking in the eye. I'm like fucking Where's monkey. your angle on that thing? What angle? And for you to crane your neck over to be able to get in there. That's what I used to fit in the back of a car. You know? <laughs> These days, I'm not going no back of no fucking yeah. cars. Those days are over with. <laughs> They're fucking over with. We're back, bitches. <laughs> Felicia Michaels. Joey Diaz. Being the Beast podcast. What's going on? You sexy, sexy savage with your new fucking glasses. Look at you. Oh, Joey. So, as I told you earlier. <laughs> we don't need to say thank you no more. Yeah, you're fuck, you're you. all cocky thank now. You. I'm not. You're very sweet to you're say that. Out in Hollywood. But I know it's bullshit when you say it, but you're no, very sweet. No, you to look say very it. beautiful yeah. tonight. You're glad your titties are banging. Okay, you. okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a step back, Diaz. But, uh, <laughs> what did she say? It was a step back. I didn't uh, say nothing. I got witnesses. <laughs> Deal with it. He's so, into the blue. That's right. So, uh, uh, are you guys sick of traveling? I know we talked about it earlier, but I am so nervous about flying tomorrow, Joey. I'm very nervous. Do you ever get nervous about flying, Ari? I'm, I'm done with the TSA. Yeah. I've stopped complying. <laughs> and for the first time, I saw them what they are. They're just a bunch of idiots. They shouldn't have control over me. I get real pissy now. Really? Yeah. They were like, it, it was from Indianapolis. They're like, sir, take your shoes off. And I was like, why? <laughs> They're like, because you have to. I'm like, that's not why. He's like, because it's been that way since 2003. And I was like, that's still not a reason. Tell me why. And some old lady was behind me. She was like, just go. And I was like, no, lady. None of us wanted this. <laughs> none of us wanted this. We didn't agree to this stuff. Raise your wow. hands up. Yeah, I'm done with them recently. I get so sick of them now. Do they get pissy to you back, though? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. When they're like, when they're like uh, sir, okay, we have to pat you down if you, if you do this. I'm like, just do whatever the fuck you want to do. Like, well, I have to ask these questions. Like, well, I'm not listening. I'm actively not listening to you. So say whatever the fuck you want, and then let me get the fuck away from you. Wow. I'm done with them. They say, raise your hands. I say, I can't. What do you want me to do now? <laughs> oh, you can't raise your arms? That's right. I can't raise my arms. Oh, my God. Now what? Wow. Who are those people? They're fucking Walmart employees. That's true. That's true. That's true. I even asked them, I was like, what would happen if I just walked past you? I don't even try to bump you, but I just walk past you. So like, Siri won't be allowed to do that. Like, what would happen if I tried? And he called his advisor over, his supervisor. Wow. I am the most uptight person in North America. You tried it with that line. And, but I do it intelligently. 
Yeah. But I don't do? fuck with those people, Ari Shafir. I'm so don't mad fuck at with them. those people because I tell you why you don't fuck with those people. A, they won't let you fly no more. If they take your flying privileges, you might as well. So we live in a police state that you can't even make fun of them. Otherwise, they're gonna fucking listen, they're gonna you fuck cannot, you over. You cannot fuck with TSA. We have a friend that is not allowed to fly in United ever again for the rest of his Why? fucking life because he kicked the counter. Okay? They're not fucking around no more at airports, guys. At all. Zero fucking tolerance. Zero. The TSA, you fuck with the TSA, you lose your you lose your flying privileges. You say something to a TSA guy, it's not even worth the aggravation. They just steal stuff out of your purse. It's a part That's of all they do. business. Well, they don't travel with your fuck with a hundred. You don't even get arrested 000. when it happens. They were stealing fucking iPads. Yeah. They were stealing iPads. Oh, why? Did you get something stolen? No, but they're just stealing stuff left and right. And every time somebody gets caught by ABC News, when they put like a tracker on an iPad, they show uh-huh. a guy picking it up. And they, they went to his house. There was that one video where they went to his house like, Sir, um, hi, we're from ABC News. He's like, oh, hi. He goes, um, do you know what happened to this iPad? We, we left it in... You were the last one seen with it. They show him like picking it up, uh-huh. looking at it, and he goes, "No, I don't have it." Goes, okay, well, we're going to set off this this uh, beeper now to see if it is. And it's like it shows it's coming from your house, and he was like, "No." And then they was like, "Can you hear that beeping? That's my iPad." It, that you wow. took. So he went back there and he goes, "Oh, I realized. Yeah, I did have it." And they fired him, but they never arrested him. They just said you're they're let go. How does he? How does? How does he steal the iPad? Don't you have your eye on the iPad? No, because when it goes through the scanning device, uh-huh. they just take it right out of there. Or when you're putting your shoes on, when you're waiting in line to go through the metal detector, they'll just right. take it. Let me tell you what the deal is. And they don't get in trouble. So how are we supposed to trust them? Well, you're in a rush, okay, uh-huh. every fucking day. Yeah, you just pick it up and go. you're at the airport, you hear, Felicia Michaels, please come back to the TSA. That means you left something. What these motherfuckers do is they don't say nothing. They put it in the box. They, they wait 20 the minutes. Shift, and they fucking clip it. Yeah. So they set this on. First of all, the guy was a Spanish, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban. He ain't copping to nothing. Yeah. I applaud the guy. He didn't know nothing. He just didn't know that there was an alarm on the He was Spanish. Time. You're right. The alarm was going, wham, 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 once he fucking took the thing. You know, I know they're going through people's luggage. These guys are probably getting eight bucks a fucking hour to boot. They probably got a shitty fucking union. Who knows what the fuck they're doing? I'm not sticking up for nobody here. I'm just saying, when you when I fly... I'm always in a fucking bad mood. Yeah. When I go through TSA, dog, it's just a part of doing business that I strive to go through as fast as possible. I take my belt off. I take the sleeping machine. I don't even want them saying anything to me. Yeah. Like, I just want to go so I can go eat or do whatever the fuck it is I do. I hate that whole line shit. Yeah, me too. Oh, It's I like they're hurting us. It. It's like they're hurting us. They're oh, my us. God. It's a fucking... There was... Where did I Go left. Go of? right. Why? Why is that guy going left? I'm going right. Why? Just do it. You know, and thank God we're not flying the way we used to. See, 10 years ago, again, Felicia, my flight was at 2. I get there at 20 to 2 and thought yeah. I was cute. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought I was cute. Yeah, it was great. At two. You're not doing that no more. 45 so, minutes. You know, no, change to an hour. Now you got to do two hours. And you sit for fucking 20 minutes. If you go through, you go through. I told you motherfuckers, if you fly through Southwest, no matter what airline you fly through, yeah. you go on their webpage and they offer some type of bonus thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. $69, $39. Southwest, 10 bucks. Thanks. Pay it. Because in your mind, in your fucking stupid mind, you thought it meant to go through all the security lines. So instead of waiting with the other schmucks, yeah. you go through the first class line. Yeah. They're not going to turn your back. So you get your ticket. If they do, I paid for it online. It said priority seat. No, you do get to go in the first class line. First class and priority. If you get the, then you're not supposed to. If you go to Delta, if you go to Delta, American, you get the fucking the sixty-nine ninety-five extra seating. Yeah. That don't mean you get to go oh, to the quick oh, line. Extra seating. You're not supposed to. Yeah. But in your mind, because you're Jewish, and you're they let you go bucker, once you're there. You're already. there. They're not oh, gonna throw yeah. you the fuck out. How many times did we see Joe in first class take all three of us fucking through? Yeah. Like with the Beatles. And we didn't even say anything to them a lot of times. So the dumber you play, the better the fuck it is at those airports. Yeah. The dumber you play at those airports. But when we and Ari flew from fucking New York, I, I showed them all the, I showed both you guys. They <laughs> had us at Kennedy Airport on one of those lines. Done waiting. Like, I'm done waiting. That's what he was doing. He was just like, I don't want to wait anymore. Where they would. Oh, he guys, can't wait for stuff. There's always an angle. And nobody was there. there. Well, because you know when you're like, I have to leave in five minutes so yeah. she should take you out of line? They didn't have anybody doing that. They, no, they had the other thing. Who's on the 8.30 flight? Oh, yeah. So we're on a 9 o'clock flight uh-huh. and they're not getting to us. So people are going through us. 
This went on for a half hour. Diaz didn't want to stand up. And finally, I go, Ari wants this. And I went home my sleep <laughs> apnea machine. I told Layla, here's the deal. I'm going to pass out. I got to eat something. I got my sleep apnea machine. I'll fucking sue Delta, whatever. The yeah, fuck because I'm going to sue everybody if it happens. <laughs> so you make your decision. Two minutes. That there's a way to do Did it. Did you but, see him do that? Yeah, I was with, oh, him. Was I with, with him. Yeah. He was with me. That's I took the guys, ball. I took the benefit the of it. You are the fucking better. I'm going to pass. If I pass out, I'm suing airport. everybody. So what do you want to do? I don't know nothing. And then they let I don't know nothing. I, I didn't know. I didn't, and you sell that. You, that's yeah. your acting class. You pay 200 a fucking month for it. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't really know you're an officer. Okay, I won't do it again. Bang. And all of a sudden, all right, just cut right through. Yeah. There you are in first class. What? Stop it. Because yeah. they'll cut your fucking privileges now, dog. The same what it used to be. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't gotten in some big trouble over that. Over what? They're not supposed to do anything to me. Over what? I don't understand any of the rules. They just implement stuff for no reason. They want you to take off your shoes because they're implementing security. Because the, the guy, they, they heard the guy had to try to have a shoe bomb. But here, let me tell you this. This isn't like weird stuff. When you take off your shoes and put them on the tray, and, and that doesn't test for the shoe bomb stuff. That won't go off in those. So it doesn't, there's no well, reason. Well, if you x-ray see if there's something in yeah. there. No. It doesn't? No, it doesn't Are look for sure? that. Really? Yeah, all it does is if it's in your shoe, like out, uh-huh. they'll, they'll take a look at it. it doesn't do anything. If you put anything. a pen in your shoe. If you put a pen, it'll get the, if yeah. it'll the metal in the pen. Yeah. But if there's, not, there's not metal in that what stuff. what I usually do, because I watched on 2020, not 60 Minutes. 2020 is for fucking mooks. It's on at 10 o'clock during the week. But sometimes you watch it, because they had a thing about airport theft. Yeah. The biggest airport theft is when you put your shit in the bin and go through security and walk around like life is beautiful, like a fucking Momo and you're looking around. Guys like me, with my mentality 20 years ago, would fly and every time I fly, I clip something. Oh, yeah. I see it all the time. I see, like I see wallets right in front. Are you, you a fucking retard? You can just grab and go if you wanted to. Are you a fucking retard? Are you a fucking retard? You get your wallet and you put it in your fucking shoe and you take your cell phone and you put it in the other fucking shoe so yeah. nobody has a chance at clipping it. Why give them the opportunity? Oh, right. Why give somebody the opportunity? They're not watching. Okay, These but, fucking people that work there are not watching. They get eight bucks a fucking so hour. So why do we have to let them do what? Why do they have those eight fucking hour employees? Why are they in charge of us? They have no training for it. <clears throat> because it's why do they get to be the ones? Doing fucking business. Why is your stuff safer at a fucking Indian casino in SoCal than it is at the, t- the Transportation Security Administration? Because they blew up two fucking planes already. And so then they get to steal our shit and touch us and we oh, can't kiss our girlfriends goodbye? Thing. Can you imagine that? How about that? People can't greet you at the fucking airport. How about just lock the door? Lock the door and tell them not to open it. <laughs> that was the only problem. <laughs> you got wow. you got to listen, man. After 9-11, shit happened, and that became a cost of doing business. What did There's Alex another Jones, way to do it. What did Alex Jones, the fucking lunatic, tell us in Houston, Texas? What? He told me and you outside. We were sitting there. Were you in Texas with us? Not this last time. Not this last time. He was talking outside. I gave him a pot cookie. He All didn't right. want to go into the, uh, the, the Senate. And he looked at me, and he goes, the crate, there's TSA was there. Yeah. And he looked at me, and he goes, the funny thing is, in two years, there's going to be TSA at the movie theater and at parks. And a year later, the Colorado shooting. So I think that'll set it up. This is all, in two, three years, there's going to be TSA at everywhere. At malls, wow. at supermarkets. You know how many employees the TSA has? Do you understand has? me? Wow. This is going to become a cost of doing business. Right. You it's know, like brown shirts. It's, the brown shirts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, no, in other just, words, and so now yeah. they're hurting us into places. In other words, now they're and fucking controlling and Felicia us. Felicia, you know what I'm talking about? What? Becomes Cuba. Right. Yeah. Becomes yeah. Cuba, but not really. Yeah. What's Cuba about? Somebody on every corner. Security checkpoints. You talk to somebody from Cuba, they say to you, dog, there's somebody on every corner. And these motherfuckers look straight ahead and they listen to everything. They got them in bars. They got them in fucking. So it just becomes communist Cuba mm-hmm. without you fucking knowing it. That's TSA a problem. Be everywhere. And what are you going to do? You're going to argue with these motherfuckers? Ari? They're going to be everywhere. Ari, so you are too late. Why are they argue, doing this to us? You argue with a guy at a fucking airport and you'll never fly again. And at the end of the day, it's 20 fucking minutes to 30 on the line. Do you know how many you people work for the TSA? Priority, like a motherfucker. Yeah, I'm curious how many people work for the TSA. 65,000. Oh, please. Really? 65,000 employees, and it's Fuck growing. It. And they're growing like a motherfucker. Yeah. We're paying 65,000 people hourly wages every day. 
Wow. How much money does that cost? We can just make the whole fucking plane bulletproof. Like, what the fuck? What? Well, that's they're just hiring an army, a bunch of low class people that don't really have any training and don't get in trouble if they fuck up. So does the government? They just lose pay their them, easy or job. Do they get paid from the revenue from the airport. Is that a government? Government, the government pays government them. Yeah. Pays them? So now just that's where our tax money goes, just to pay these people that don't know what they're doing. And in New York, you got to say your name. You got to give them your ticket and say your name. Why? Why in New York do you have to do it, not anywhere else? There's no, nothing's the same anywhere. They all just make up their own shit. Why are they in charge of us? It's like Danny Murray to fucking improv. Yeah. You can't drink on stage. Yeah. You can't bring You got to be there 12 minutes early. I go to 20 fucking improvs. You can drink on stage. Yeah. Oh, no. Here you can. State law. Well, I played across the state. Get and the not... fuck out of here. What was the difference? That's the way the fucking situation is. But you guys don't remember. This is what I understand about the TSA. All right. Uh, 30 years ago in this country, there was a hiring freeze. And the cops didn't hire for a long time. And then when they went back to start hiring, and this happened a lot. You can look it up. But what happened was they had to hire people like Miami. In the 80s, when the Cubans came to Miami, the police department was so flooded, they got forced to hire minority police officers oh, without right. checking into their fucking background. Because they were behind. They, they were them. checking. They weren't doing juvie records. Mm -hmm. so, so they got a bunch of straight criminals working. So my this happened in Miami. New York, it happened. Me growing up, I grew up with a bunch of guys that were hard-nosed guys, and all of a sudden they all became cops. And I was like, how the fuck did you become a cop? Undercovers and shit. I was like, damn! Yeah. What happened was, in the 80s, they, they did this thing of hiring. They got into a bind. And they hired them. And in Miami, the, the biggest thing that happened was uh, these cops called the river cops. They were killing other cops and drug dealers. They each did like 20 years. They got thrown. They even did a movie about them and a movie of the week. And uh, a buddy of mine played one of the fucking cops. And, and it was really interesting. But this is what's going on with the TSA now. After 9-11, we got a gun put to our heads. Yeah, we so did. So we had to do a hiring thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We need fucking jobs. These guys need fucking jobs. What, what do we know if they're trained? They're trained to look at a fucking screen. They don't even know if they're looking at. Maybe they don't even, we don't fucking need them. Maybe we don't need them. We you don't. Get a metal detector? That's the way it is. That's just the way it is. What was it before? How did, how did you go through security before 9 /11? Like a doctor. No, but what did you do? Was there a metal you detector you had to walk through? There was a metal detector that they, one guy looked at. And you could keep your backpack you could, on. You could keep. You had to take your backpack on. You keep your sneakers on. You keep your belt on. You in Canada, they your jacket still, off. Canada, they still keep your sneakers on. Jacket. I remember as back as '87, you had to take your jacket off and empty the pockets because one time I left weed in the pocket huh. and it went right through security. And I was like, "Woo!" Oof. I never forgot that. They just now you have to stop, take your belt off, your fucking shoes. Put them on the thing. You got to make sure the guy in front of you. I, dog, three weeks ago, I was leaving Arizona at 8 in the morning. And I went through security and some guy was on the fucking phone. On the phone, talking. Just talking. Yeah. Took his belt off. He was moving at the speed of a fucking fart. Yeah. <laughs> and the girl in front of me is like, excuse me, can I go around? And, she, and he said something rude. And her boyfriend said something, and he said something back to him. And then the yeah. cop came over and asked what happened. And next thing you know, the guy's like, do you have something to say? I go, I didn't say fucking nothing. But you should fucking move. What yeah. the fuck? You know what I'm saying? You're special. You're going to be on the fucking phone there. Put yeah. the fucking phone Everyone's away. in a rush right now. Let's go. We're all in a fucking <laughs> rush. What the fuck? Because they give off the that fucking phone. Short little tray. Yeah, so you no, have like I'm 10 special. seconds to take like everything off. To some girl that don't fucking exist or something like that. So, you know, <laughs> three of us are fucking arguing, right? <laughs> and the security guy, dog, they walked this motherfucker out, guys. Oh, really? They put him on the side. They got on the radio. And within 10 minutes, within 10 seconds, there were six cops running there and two fucking guys. They seen everything go down on camera. Another dude, Uncle Joey, I was number three on the line. He asked me if I had a problem, and I finally said, put the fucking phone down. Yeah. Enough. You still on the phone trying to be cute. What are you trying to do? So they took him out. They took him somewhere. Me and the other people walked straight to our terminals. They took this motherfucker into a room. Now let's pretend you're traveling. You got a grinder in your pocket that's got oh, yeah. no weed in it. Let's pretend you have a, a rolling paper that they see in your wallet. Now it makes them go through your luggage. You just take your fucking belt off. You take your shoes off. And you go through security and you shut your fucking mouth. And that's it. <laughs> we gotta stop them now before they get too much. You can't, there's nothing to stop. They're on a government contract. Yeah, who, stop how are we people. gonna stop them? There's no way, you're right. <laughs> Listen, man. When the Mayans said that 
life was going to change or everything was the world was going to end. Yeah. They're not going to end. It's just the way we are used to living is going to change. Within the next three or four years, something the way we're used to living is, has to change. Yeah. And the more you look at it, everything's turning into, if they put, let's pretend they do put TSA at parks and movie theaters, in a way, it's communist Cuba without being Cuba, yeah. without being it's, mentioned. That is what Nobody's going to see it. Nobody's yeah. going to see the hand coming. No. <clears throat> and then suddenly it'll just be this. It's not like they're going to say, okay, now line up and we're going to take you somewhere. It's just going to be checkpoints everywhere. And like, it's just less free. You know, we're going to have another fucking uh, ther- a terrorist threat. We're going to have another terrorist situation. I feel like they years. almost invent these terrorist threats to say, okay, now we're doing something else to you. Like, they never quite... 9-11 happened, but, like, the other stuff never happened. It just almost happened. And they averted it, so now we have to test your water because they caught somebody with acid. And luckily, he didn't get it done. They always fuck up. These great terrorists get all the way through and then fuck up somehow. Now, now this conversation we're having, just to conversation. Can't let up a shoe bomb, but he got it on. Come on. Uh, we're going to start getting watched and our phones are going to get tapped. <laughs> I'm sure. It makes me not but believe it. we're walking on ice, we might as well dance. <clears throat> what a lot of people in America don't know, last week, the Treasury almost got bombed in New York City. I know you almost read that. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I know you read that. Did you yeah. read the whole thing? No. Okay. Wasn't well, he kind of baited into right. doing it? You're right. Now, so what you basically have is they got a guy that looks like Ari. Yeah. Ari gets busted for reef and they go, come on down, we're going to give you 10 fucking years Oh, your father's from Israel. We're going to deport him. Your sister with the kids. Your mother. But, you know how to speak Arabic? I can fucking try. All right, we're going to put you in a sheet. We're going to get you a suntan. We're going to take those fucking glasses off. And you're going to go out and cause problems. What's cause problems? You're going to go to the mosque, kneel down, and ask people, fuck America. Fuck America. Uh-huh. And eventually, somebody's going to go, yes, fuck America back. What do we do? Because he's got a cousin who was Al-Qaeda. The same way you have a cousin growing up that's in a gang and your kids hear about him. And they're interested. And so then they just come that way. Do you way. understand me? And now yeah. one thing leads to another. I want to blow up America. It's like me coming to you and, and saying, so let's kill Paulie so Shaw. You're you plan it together. I'm weak-minded. <clears throat> but the guy is really a federal agent. But then if someone's... <clears throat> if, if you can't... Talk they sold the guy bombs. Bombing, you know. Right, I mean? but then they sold him bombs. Yeah. yeah. They sold him bombs. He yeah. bought bombs from them and, yeah. and they put phony yeah, bombs in. Could. So I'm very he interested. Bought bombs, he know? bought bombs. So what I'm very interested in, in is what's that word? What's that word? I'm yeah, but so they knew it the whole time. Baiting. So there was baiting. never really baiting. There's another word for baiting. Oh, uh, enticing. Uh, uh, oh, entrapment. 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 Yeah. yeah. So I think in a way it's entrapment. But they, they're stopping it at the fucking core, guys. Yeah, and it's like, oh, which, they always get lucky. He, they fucked up somehow. It's like, what do you mean? It's always lucky it doesn't happen? So so you're saying the current th- stuff doesn't work, so we need more stuff, and thank God nothing happened again. First off, it just makes me you have to assume. Trust them. You have to assume. The same guys that steal you have everything. To assume. As of 19, whatever, 9 11, you had to assume that there was keywords in your conversation on the phone that clicked things off. Yeah. In the old days, it was bomb, eight ball. There yeah. were certain words that clicked the computer off somewhere that made them start listening. After 9-11, you have to assume they're listening to everything, everything. every time. Yeah. You have to assume. When you go to Vegas and you're jerking off in the shower, they got you on tape. <laughs> Sorry to be looking in your eye. I'm just... <laughs> I know you wash your pussy and you like to scrub that little fucking monster to the Get in there. Bubbles and the whole thing. Oh, wow. You know, polish that asshole. Yes, you have the toothbrush yes, yes. out. So you have to assume when you're in Vegas and you eat a fat stripper's asshole, yeah. they got you on tape. Right. When you're walking down the hallway and you grab your boyfriend's uh-huh. cop, they got you on fucking tape. Everything's you on know? tape now, for well, sure. Yeah. Well, what was the guest we had that talked about New York? Uh, and he said oh. that in New York, if you have a blue shirt on, on the 18th cop? Street, somebody talked about if you have a shirt on on 18th Street yeah. and they're looking for somebody in, in Manhattan, they'll find you if you had a blue shirt on. They'll get you to the exact fucking street within fucking six minutes. Is that Nick Betancourt? Somebody was Someone telling like us that, was yeah. here that, that crime that's stuff. The, that's, after what happened in New York, New yeah. Yorkers don't even mind. Oh yeah, they they said they were ba- they they, the, they were baiting. That's what they said. New Yorkers who were baiting the New York cops were baiting Muslims. Yeah, trying to get them so that they could then follow them. Guys, but after what happened in New York, see, we were out here. You were out here. Number two, I hate to say this, and Felicia knows. Felicia lived in New York for ten years. Yeah, I grew up there. When I seen those towers go down, 
in my stomach, I felt raped. Yeah, we all I can't did. imagine the people that were walking around. I can't imagine. I heard people that were coming over the bridge, and when you came over into Hoboken on the ferry, they would spray you down with these chemicals. And they said the looks on people's faces were like, you got fucking raped. So I know if you live there right now, yeah, oh. it's an invasion of my privacy. But they got a fucking camera on everybody's ass on the streets. Yeah. I don't know into those old apartments mm -hmm. that they got cameras. That's something completely different. I don't want to get into that. I know they got the wires tapped to a degree. Cell phones, you're done. What do you think? The cell phone was invented because they wanted to invent it. The cell phone was invented again, like the computer. They keep tabs on everybody. The easiest way to tap somebody now is on a fucking cell phone. You switch that motherfucker to one range. or one, Again. I'm not no technology, technological guy. <laughs> I watched Mission Impossible for eight years. I know how these motherfuckers crack a lot. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, you know, you have to assume every word you yeah, say on the yeah, cell phone yeah. is under surveillance. Yeah. Uh, there's a certain time limit on it. Maybe you have 10 seconds to talk or something. But everything is under a watchful eye. These podcasts, we have a great time. We talk about eating ass and pussy. But I guarantee the first mention of us talking about getting together and playing bongos at, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. We go to fucking jail. Somebody's got to be listening. This is freedom of speech to the fucking max what we're doing right yeah, here. We're yeah. putting it out ourselves. You mm -hmm. know, this is heavy duty. So you got to understand the time, Zari. Don't get upset about this. Dog, and I'm worse than you are. I get upset. Listen so do you, do you really think if someone put, like, bomb, the word bomb in their email, that that email would get flagged eventually? Probably they start looking at your other stuff, see if there's anything else worth eventually. looking really? for. Really? You think so? Yeah. Anything like that, you got to assume. You have to. Well, they have the assume. power to do that. Yeah. So why wouldn't they? Yeah. You know, I'm I'd want to just be sure. I don't work for CNN, and I'm not going to tell you the Kennedy Act of 84. If you gave me a week and you made uh -huh. me look it up, I would call an attorney and see exactly what the statutes were. And yeah, all but then every shit. open mic comic would have would be flagged. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. True that. Yeah, you that's know. all they talk about is how bombing went last but, night. But it has to, it, you, you have to eventually know that everything you do, pretty soon they're going to, and they're trying to narrow us down even more to the eyeball. You know, oh, eventually yeah. it's going to be beyond the fingerprint. It's going to be the fucking eyeball where, you know, click Ari Shafir, click Joey Diaz, you know. And when you fly, you're not even going to need ID anymore. Get pulled over by the cops. You just look into a fucking thing. Right. You know, and that's 20 that's, years from now. That's yeah. who your children are going to get. I sort of mind that less. I mind that less, just keeping tabs on me. But it's like, if I didn't do anything, what are you searching for? Yeah, in your own place, you're supposed to be able to do whatever you want. We live in very interesting times, my friends. This is not the 80s and the 70s and no more remember when we got those scanners the full body scanners uh, yeah. they just switched it to a new one yeah. they didn't tell anybody but they switched that it. freaks me out the scanner freaks me out because it just is like and here comes radiation yeah radiation yeah. so this because we fly all the time I like, talked to one of the guys good. they don't use that one anymore why because it's bad yeah because they eventually admitted nobody wants to get radiation and those guys said like yeah I, I won't stand next to it when it's going off all day there's yeah. radiation all day long I'm not going to stand next to it it's like yeah why are they trying to convince us? And then here's what I heard. And I read this like a couple different sources. The guy who owns the scanner company, uh -huh. not just like works for it or used to be an advisor, he owns the company that does the scanners. There was no reason that we had to do the scanners. I just switched for no reason. That guy who owns the scanner company was the head of the TSA. Uh -huh. It was just some dude who's like, hey, let me sell you my shit for no reason. We'll just make a bunch of cash that way. Yeah. That's straight what it was. Like, he should say, like, yeah, we, if we need scanners, we can make sure not to use mine, but we should get scanners. Yeah. So, obviously, we can't use my scanners because that would look so bad. He just straight did it. We don't even need it. He just upped it said, let everybody get radiation. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's tested. We tested it. The same guy's telling us all that. Yeah. They're just corrupt. We don't need them. They're just a fucking mafia. A different type of mafia. I was talking to they somebody work with somewhere the, with the okay of the cops. You know, 30 years ago, what do you think that the economy has been bad? People think like the economy is really fucking bad. Look at the economy in the 70s. Yeah. Look at the fucking old videos of New York in the 70s and look really? what the streets look like. There was garbage everywhere, there was garbage strikes. You know, and what saved New York and a lot of these fucking cities was that a lot of people were laid off. But if I came to you, Ari, and I said to you, hey, man, you know that back room you got? Yeah. From five to seven, you like sports, don't you? Yeah. How about we put a phone back there? 
you take bets from five to fucking seven every night. I'm paying mm -hmm. two thousand a week. You could do that and get away with it. Nobody right. would even know you were doing it. Your wife wouldn't even fucking know if you didn't want that. Right. You would get away with that. I know people who did that for fifteen fucking years and lived okay part time. They were firemen. The other part time, they just sat back there with a phone from five to eight. You know, when I was a fucking kid, if you needed money, you bought a hundred quaaludes for two hundred bucks and you sold them for four, and it was simple. It's not like you had a sign on that said Quaalude salesman. Hey, Harvey, you're going to go down to the bar anyway, right? You're going to go to the store, right? Friday and Saturday? Yeah. yeah. You're going to sell 50 a night at $4. You're going to make 200 bucks in two nights. What happened to the Quaalude? The Quaalude wasn't made by some guy in a basement. It was made by a pharmaceutical corporation called Lily Rora. All right. That's who made the Quaalude. Really? It was called something else, but it was really methoqualone or something like that. But it was really a pharmaceutical drug. What was the name of it? Lily. 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 There was Lily. In the 70s, if you looked at a Valium, a yeah. Valium always had a V in the middle. All of a sudden, they just changed one fucking day into a flat pill. So yeah. what really happened was this. They eliminated the street value, and they eliminated the whole pill market of that certain type of pill. And what did they do? They re Now they gave it to doctors to put it out there. And it's a corporation now uh, that gives it to a doctor. So now instead of getting that shit on the street, they said, fuck all that. We're going to throw bureaucracy into police. it now. Now you got to go to a prescription. You got to go to a fucking pharmacy. So what did they change? Right now, our country's in the worst fucking pill epidemic it's ever fucking been. Yeah. They'll give you a pill for anything in this country right now. Anything in this country. What was the difference? What was the fucking difference? Get from a dealer or So a everything just went from, yeah. What was the yeah, fucking nothing. difference? You have to look at things that way sometimes. I know I'm crazy, Felicia. You think I'm fucking nuts. No, but I don't think I'm I was thinking about that the other day, how they just took something off the streets. So what? So right now, right? Yeah. I can't go to Felicia's on a Wednesday night with my wife and play cards no more until 6 in the morning. But what did they do? We got casinos in fucking 90 of the fucking... We got casinos in 48 of the 52 fucking states. Yeah, the casino okay. thing's kind of crazy. Okay, it's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. Every town you go to now that Seattle, you haven't been to over. since you haven't started doing comedy with your kids, they're like, after, what do you guys do now? We go to the casino. Casino? Yeah. What the fuck is this? Every city you go to is an hour away from a fucking casino now. But I know 20 years ago... You got slots in Maryland. I, yeah, I'd be at fucking yeah. Felicia's and she'd go, hey, if you want to go play cards... Around the corner, my boyfriend has a card game. You go with yeah. 30 people. Uh, now you go to Commerce or Hustler. A TV and shit. People playing cards. Nobody would fuck with you. You know, if you stayed there for three days, that's how it was. People left and people came back. It was a fucking card game. The house made fucking 1500 So right now, we I go, Felicia, I know you're unemployed. I'll take the back fucking house. I'll give you 1500 every fucking Wednesday. That's 6000 a month. That's six thousand a month for doing nothing. Coming back here with your one titty out and shaking it. Mm -hmm. Six fucking thousand. We play <laughs> cards. People did that. What did they do? They took away. They 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 made gambling charges now a felony and four year mandatory. So they could open prison. up the casinos everywhere. But they opened up fucking casinos. So what did they do in a way? I I see this Just because I'm an old it. fucking man. But what am I going to do? Complain? Who am I going to complain to? It's become corporate. It used to be one security guy. Now yeah. we got 35. And it comes out of your plane ticket. It yeah. comes out of your plane ticket. Yeah. Look yeah, at your fucking plane ticket. Because they have to pay a lot of that money, ticket. right? Yeah. Look at your plane ticket. Look at your plane I don't even ticket. Mind, I don't even mind a guy just wanting to grab money and just make say, like, oh, we need to use our thing. But it's like, why? He's slowing all of us down to do it. Just rob the government. Don't fuck us over, too. Just yeah. rob the government. Just rob a casino. That's cool. But don't put everybody else out. Just get your, get your cash. You know, Felicia and I flew out mm. of Southwest. Yeah. About three months ago, and I noticed this. And I always feel bad about this stupidity and stuff. And, uh, Felicia chose to get on the fucking line. Uh -huh. Oh, he got so mad. And I went through the priority and got the fuck out of here. <laughs> and with the priority. When you travel with Joey, you have to be on your toes. There's yeah. no fucking around. There's no reason to talk because if I talk to you, then you slow me the fuck down. The security people see that. Well, the fuck you have to talk to Joey walks really fast and then he's like, rrr, 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 and you're like, what? And what, what are we doing? What's happening? What's happening? You, you, know, you don't know what's going on. Just, just, what did you tell me to do? And get over here. It's like, oh, no, there's away. an old lady in front of me. I don't want to shove her. Oh, he's gone. Fuck the old lady. Come on. Confusion. Yeah, it comes out of nowhere too. You're just talking normally. He's like, okay, everything. And all of a sudden, he's like, all right, we gotta go right now. You're like, wait, wait, go, go. What's happening? That's so true. Give me some warning. You know, guys, timing is everything. <laughs> 
timing, you know, they don't say with comedy, timing is <laughs> everything. You sit where he wants to sit. Timing yeah. goes, yeah. yeah stand where he wants to sit. Where you sit in the middle of the bus when you can sit in the back. <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't know. I don't, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you mook. <laughs> <laughs> I am I a mook? I just thought we would go get a muffin from Starbucks. Yes. That's Thank make you me for a mook. saying that. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to have a lot of fun. And it's with that, that, that little bit of tone, like you're the biggest ass. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's stuff he's done before. I'm like, what do you mean you've gotten this before? I'm like, oh, it's on a Wednesday, not on Thursday. I'm like, what? I don't know these rules. <laughs> Uh, uh. That's why you're stuck in the line when I'm over here. <laughs> <in your apple. laughs> yeah, you're probably really bad about it. You're like, oh, what did I, do? I get so fucking. The same way, like with dates too. <laughs> with dates, like, are we gonna go to the thing? <laughs> January seventeenth. What? So on January seventeenth, what? I'll fucking email you later. No, you won't. You won't email me later. You fucking won't. Get it together, dog. Well, stop fucking mumbling. Tell me. <laughs> Sometimes I know he's gonna react weird too, and I just say it anyway. I don't care. We'll say so. I, I say something like I'm. I'm gonna. I'm staying an extra day to have lunch with my aunt or something. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. But I'm not even, oh, I know what it was. I got a bike in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I was like here we go. I'm, I'm on a bike riding back to the hotel. Like, are you out of your mind? What the fuck is wrong with you? You're 53 years old. That's how you're handling yourself. Like, it's a warm night. Shut up. I know, uh, I know. Thank you for saying that. If I told you Eddie Bravo today. What did you say to him? Because Eddie Bravo had the same problem you and I had. The meniscus. Mm -hmm. mm. But he keeps fucking it up. And I know how that motherfucker works. It was the same thing that happened to me. You know how you keep doing it. Oh, yeah. And doing it. You put ice on it. You take Advil. It's and worse. You keep. And then, you know, I won't do nothing for three days. Then you do it and it gets worse. And now you're really hurt. And now you, it takes a month to go to the doctor to get your appointment. Yeah. And then it takes another two weeks to get x-rays because they got to approve it. And then you got to do the fucking ultrasound when they don't find the x-ray. Yeah. So the whole time, you got to, after even you go to the doctor, it's still like a three, four week window unless you stay on it. You got to call the insurance and go, hey, dog, my knee's on fire. I'm, I can't step on the brake. I'm like, I'm going to hit fucking children at a crosswalk. Then they'll, you got to fucking get on your insurance sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, the other day he called me he's like Joey I'm fucking done you know and, and today somebody was saying that he couldn't teach his knee got so bad oh really so I called him and I go how's your knee and he goes I can't do it for another month I go Eddie it's nothing if you're scared you know I mean trust me I was fucking scared he Four goes minutes. no was, I got these seminars he's got these seminars he oh, can't yeah. cancel and I go you know what dog I'd rather cancel them and get it over with. but I go you know what fuck it I go just you do the whole paid. month of November and then take December off. Yeah. There's nobody here in December. It's fucking, it's dead. Yeah. They told me I couldn't fly for 10 days. I was like, oh, well, in that case, yeah, I can't do that day. I was going to fly three days later. I had to, you like, did something wrong with your knee, too? Yeah. I had he my, did both of these. Yeah, both of uh, You know what? I'm going to have to do my right one, too. I did my left in like 2008, my right in 2012. What was wrong with your knees? Meniscus tear. From what? The tires break after a while. You know, ah. you got to replace them. Not from anything. It's amazing how you tear them and you don't know. Yeah. You can get around still. But the worst was I was whenever I got into a car, if, I, my, knee, if my knees were bent and there was pressure on them, uh -huh. it would buckle. So if I had to get really? into a car, like, you know, on the side, you don't have to sort of lean down. Uh -huh. It would just like go out or getting out of a car would go. I had to like, I had to like open the door, then put my back towards the inside of the door, then just let myself fall onto the seat and then lift my legs up and, and pull them around. So, so what happens? Do they like do it lap or, like uh, very Small cameras. Arthroscopic your, surgery. Yeah. Right there, three holes. One, two, wow. three. Arthroscopic. They go in there with the they camera. They go here. They go in. They go in with a camera. And it One's kills. garbage, right? It kills. It, even if they didn't do anything, even if they just went to look around, uh -huh. it's going to kill for like, a, for like a full week. It's going to be oh, so really? painful. Yours is really bad. Mine wasn't that bad. Mine was bad. I thought it was going to be worse. No, you know what though? No, that's not true because I was up. I did a spot yeah, the next night. Up. I, I, I went to the Y the next day or two days later. Yeah. I rode the bike for five minutes. And stopped the crutches in like minutes. four days. Then I went for like 15 minutes. But I, yeah. I worked it. 
But I fucked it up with Miami lifting weights thinking I was Tarzan Jr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I did in Vegas once, the first one. I just said, let me do some kettlebells. And I was like, I felt a tweak. And I was like, what am I doing? That's what got me into the trouble. I saw Rashad Evans after I got my knee surgery. I had my leg up. I felt like a winner because I had knee surgery. <laughs> it's the only time. He came out of the main room of the store. And I saw him. He came over and said, hi. He was really nice. I said, what happened? Because like, yeah, I had my tap out pants on just because it had the most room for all the bandages. I was like, you know, dog, meniscus. You know how it is. <laughs> it fucking hurts. Yeah. It hurts when you're hurting. I had my eyes on it the whole month of December. And I had pushed the uh, surgery back for three weeks. But once I got it, yeah. It was fucking nothing. It really wasn't. I yeah, it's pretty quickly like you're back. They put you under though, right? Yeah, oh yeah. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't faint. Yeah. At all. I fainted uh, a couple months ago. I fainted, but when they gave me a needle in the ass, you it fainted? was traumatizing. Yeah, that was the worst it got. But yeah. I knew I had to pay. You know, every time the other day I cut my finger, fucking Sunday morning, we got to meet downstairs at six thirty. We got to leave. Flights at nine. We got to bring back the fucking rental car. I go, you know what? I ain't gonna have time for breakfast. I'll get a bagel downstairs. And I'll get a slice on Orange Gina. I open up the fucking thing, but the, it was like one of those fancy hotels. Yeah. I open up the refrigerator this way. The, you know, I had a cabinet and then the refrigerator inside, but this was by the hook. So when uh, I pulled out, I took a piece of my finger off. Dog, uh, I had to sit back and like, please don't faint. Oh, uh, uh, wow. Not now. Wow. Not yeah, we now. gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. You can't do this to me now. And I got. I got fucking through it. I did my little breathings. <laughs> I almost did it when I got my bandages off, seeing the blood. Yeah, super... you do, you do. When you got your what off? My bandages off. Oh, really? No, I was good. See, all really? this shit. But I kept saying, you know what? I got away with it, but I know I got to pay for it. When? I'm one of those guys. I got away with not fainting, but I'm going to pay for it somewhere. Yeah. Final, if final, something yeah. weird is going to happen, because that's how it usually happens. Something fucking stupid. I didn't even faint for like six times. And then I went to the dentist and I tasted the blood that I get the oxygen tanks out. Really? I'm one of those fucking momos. So uh, <laughs> you momo I, I went for a bunch of blood tests, intravenous during the surgery. Yeah. Uh, I went for a blood test, two blood tests in two days when they thought that I had a blood clot after the knee surgery. Yeah. So I did well. The one that I did the surgery, I did the blood test at nine, stone to the gills. Stone to the gills. And that's when I get fucked up. Yeah. Once I think about it, I feel the needle going in or something. Yeah. Ooh, that's when I fucking yeah. pass out. But yeah. I went to get a simple fucking uh, penicillin shot in my ass. Didn't even feel it, guys. Just the thought of her giving me a shot in the ass. That was I enough. I had to take my shirt off. Uh -huh. my was you sweaty. got all sweaty? Oh, pale. Was that the day you came over here and little Esther was here? I'm not sure. I was really embarrassed. Like, it's embarrassing. I couldn't go to the doctor. I asked I my go. nurse doctor, the lady, was. I was like, oh, I must be because I didn't have anything to eat today. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that must be what it is. But suddenly when I opened up your bandages, you didn't have anything to eat, sir. No, I go out. And I just did two more two weeks ago. Two more what? Two more blood tests. Like, oh, really? Like a soldier. I went to the one place and they're Filipinos. They don't fuck around. I told them at the door. I said, listen, I'm just telling you ladies, I might go down. They said, no problem. Let's go. They took really? me into a room. They put an ice pack behind my neck. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's and nice. And one on my fucking forehead. To oh, move. that's and nice. The lady held it there like, wow. you're not going to pass out. I put my iPod on, Santana, Oye, come over. I looked the other way. I felt the needle going a little bit. I heard the pump because now they got like a bass drum. <laughs> to suck it out of there? <laughs> Did you see that one? Did you see that one, Felicia Michael? <laughs> I got the little bass drum. Uh -huh. there, and you, that's all you hear. You just hear the pump. Yeah. It just Whenever I got the STD test, they put the thing in, they put the needles in, and they put like a, like a, it looks like a seltzer spray thing, canister. Uh -huh. But then that fills up with blood, and they take that one off, they put another one on. <laughs> they take that one off, they put another one on. And then they get three vials worth. Yeah, that's how they do it. With yeah. Those little it just keeps going. I'm like, how much blood yeah. is going to pour out right now? Well, I hate when you get your blood pressure taken, and they make that thing really So tight. tight. On your arm, that I almost I have almost anxiety when that happens. Really? I don't like. I don't like that either. Yeah, I, that I flip. Me out. They got to do it I two or three that. times to me. Oh really? My doctor finally figured it out. I've gone to doctor's appointments where they're like, uh, "Can we talk to you for a second? We can't let you go till this drops." <laughs> and if it's a foreign place, like one mm -hmm. that I don't go to a lot, I'll be there for a while. But Doctor Waxler, I'll walk in there some mornings without smoking weed. Sleeping eight hours, drinking, eating cereal for breakfast, just driving on the 101. I'll get a thought about Cuba, yeah, or my ex wife or something. By the time I get to the doctor's <laughs> office, your anxiety's up. I'm 180 over 150, uh, shit like that. That's walking zombie type shit. Oh, wow. And, then, and that's the girl does it. 
It's a cute Mexican girl does it. Where? And then she Bob leaves. Bob Hope? No, you don't go to Bob, Bob Hope. Bob Hope, yeah, absolutely. Oh. She leaves, and by the time he comes in, he's like, I can see the blood pressure's high again. And then he'll do something on the computer, and then he'll talk to me, and then he'll go, all right, let's And then it goes down. And, wow. Right down. Wow. I, and then they call it white coat, white coat fever. They call it, they have a name. Yeah, well, you can't get an accurate test because you're in a weird situation. Me, yeah. And then they even put the, the one on my belt where I brought it home, and I fucked it up. Fucked it up. Oh, really? What, just just listen, man, I'm one of those guys that once I have a knowing that you're watching me, my shit's gonna go up anyway. Like uh-huh. I just knowing that it was on my belt. Yeah. Like I couldn't take a shower for a day. Right there, me not taking a shower, I'm gonna be fucking angry. Oh yeah. You know, because it's got batteries. I was losing it. You can only watch the side where you have no fucking computer on you. Come on. I can't do it. I gotta take uh-huh. showers, dog. <laughs> that raises my blood pressure right there. You gotta wash that ass. Bro. You gotta wash that ass. No, three. I love it. Three days you couldn't wash after uh, the surgery. You didn't take a shower for three days. But I do that all the time. Oh, Jesus. You'll see me all the time with the same shirt on from yesterday and the day before. But no, no, listen. Sometimes you, you can put your sh- same clothes on every day. No, I sleep in it. But you keep gotta it on. wash your nuts and your asshole. You know what I'm saying? You don't do it on your armpits. Nothing. No, no sometimes. You put deodorant over the old funk and just right Put the old deodorant over it, yeah. Oh, this guy's a filthy fuck. My balls still smell fresh. No, they don't. I'm not a sweater. No, that don't mean nothing. They After a few days, it smells really bad. When I can smell myself when you're sitting down, you ever get that? And you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sit for like five minutes. Let it really seep up. And it's weird because you have two different types. There's like three three, three or four different types of ball sweat. It smells, yeah. It smells. I caught one the other day in the daytime because usually you have the YMCA. One. That sucks through your jeans. <laughs> you have the YMCA one, right? Yeah. And then you have the one that's like, a, it's like a, all what, day. What you put on, on, a, on a pan to get it greasy, it feels like that, like uh-huh. olive oil. Yeah. It's <laughs> pan? Oh, no. pan, like spray pan. It has pan. that olive oil wank to it, Felicia. It's terrible. Oh, yeah. and it, it develops on the side. You could scoop it uh-huh. up and you're like, wow, this is real. You can, Yeah, it turns, it's like, you can like. Right, but then what's fucked uh, up is when you have gym sweat over that. Uh, and then it's like a fucking, like a road that had an oil spill. Right. You don't know what you're hitting, like your finger moves slow, like, eh. It's disgusting. I'm ball sure sweat it is. and all that I'm shit. Sure it is. Oh, yeah. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah, it's you real a bad loose. Dose of ball sweat in your nose, <laughs> and the problem is when you mix it to. with the. <laughs> what was the last time? Oh, yeah. Do you ever. T- what yeah. was the last time you got a bad dose of nuts, nut wang? Nut wang. <laughs> 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 Let me think about that. It's been a while. Do you, when that happens, do you man up and just go, and just like, all right, we're here, we're going to keep doing this? Or oh, do you to, just kind of uh, call, it, call it a night? Well, you know. Just fuck. It depends uh, where you, at what point you're at, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like right you, when you go down there, you're just like, whoa. Yeah. If the first time you get some nut You know what? First that time very you go rarely it. happens because most guys are pretty conscientious. Yeah, but what happens in New York when you're walking around all day in the fucking subways and it's summertime and you got to walk up five flights to your room, to your apartment? You both must, your pussy and your dick must both stink. How do you get fucking New York? <laughs> Seems disgusting. I we go from air conditioned car here to air conditioned apartment. There's no more than one flight of stairs, or we're fucking getting an elevator. I get it out of them. I get it out of them. I get it out of them. I get it out. In my day, I always got it out of the chair. What do you mean you got it out of them? You try to maneuver. Like, so what's the story? Did you go home yet? Oh, you get it out of them. After work, like, did you go home yet? Shit, no, I didn't. Fuck it. That ass is, it's on fire. Funky. The pussy might be good, but she took a shit at lunchtime. You're gonna get, oh my you know, God. Yeah. You're going to get the ass wank mixed yeah. in there. You don't want oh that. My you don't God. need that when you've been drinking. If, I, my, if my ass gets sweaty, then I'll... I know. I can calculate. I can calculate. <laughs> oh my God. If you left the house at 7 in the morning and sit, and I pick you up at 6 and you didn't wash that ass or that pussy, oh yeah. you, took a sh- you took a oh. shit at some point of the day. Uh, and I don't want to smell it. We're doing doggy style. I'm going to smell it. Yeah, I'm going to smell it. You just get a little bit. You're like, going to smell it. You can deal with it. If you're a soldier. You, you can, stop? You, no, you can no, deal with it. No, you deal with it. You're a soldier. You're trained You don't assassin. even stop doggy style. Not, you don't even but, go to the missionary. It's not going to be the same because you want to just dive right there and oh, eat yeah. ass and pussy combination. Yeah, that's not going to happen anymore. You're going to think you get fucking asshole juice. <laughs> I'll push him As- down from doggy style to straight in your stomach. Juice. Asshole juice all over you. Is that what you do? You push him down? So that when they're straight on their stomach. So then I, I, Elbow on their back to yeah, get him down? And that way my head can be closer to their head instead of right over their asshole. Oh. I've never asshole juice. Yeah, and you get on your yeah. stomach. That's yeah. the problem, though. You get on your stomach. Now your stomach smells like shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's fucking because it yeah. comes off a little bit. Your nose. <laughs> you gotta wipe it off after this. A chick with yeah, it's better than chick. A chick with boots <laughs> always yeah. scares me sometimes. Really? Chick with boots? Yeah, like tall boots. That's always fucking gross me out. Really? Yeah, that's so. Cause Why? Because she had those boots on all day. Uh, yeah, feet. no breathability. Be kicking and shit. That's leather. Oh, really? I, I Tight jeans. That. That's a problem. <laughs> I'm horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Do, do you think that when you see a girl in tight jeans, like, ugh? No, but it ends up becoming a problem. Yeah, really? Like, no, I don't of... think it's going to be sweaty. But it just, it is sometimes. I don't mind pussy with some wang. I don't, it's got to have patois. a little wang to it. I don't want, like, it smells like Oh, I like powder. it clear. I one time. No powder. smell. Ah, you got to have something, because then you start searching for it. You start moving shit down there. Sorry, do you have a particular <clears throat> incident that ever happened to you where you were like, what the fuck? Yeah. Did you ever get stinky pussy? Sticky ass I've gotten it just oh, bothers me after a while. Sticky pushes yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I had an ex that had had it all the time, but man, I I just put up with it. But it was like stinky mm. pussy or stinky ass. Stinky pussy. Oh really? But it's so like when kept... this doesn't smell not when it smells like pussy, but when it smells like bat like yeast infection. I'll just keep going though. Oh no. I'll keep going. I remember that. I had a girl, yeah, who was like that for like almost always. Oh really? I'll still do it, it's just not as fun. But I'll still do it. And then afterwards your dick smells so bad. Oh. Like, hey. That's when I gotta scrub. Usually I'll let it go, but I gotta get in there and wash it off after that. It just stinks, and it's mixed with a little <laughs> bit of. You get to spit in your hand and rub it all over your dick first. You get that smell in there too. Oh, I feel bad for them later. I mean, what happens if you start fooling around in the middle of the night? I stink because I stink like your pussy, and your pussy stinks. Wow, did you ever say that to her? No, of course yeah. not. Did you know that Gamefly.com offers over 8,000 video games? What they do is they send you the disc in the mail, you send it back when you're done playing. This way you don't clog up all the landfills. There's no late fees, no hassles with access to all new releases. It'll work on your PlayStation, your Nintendo, Wii, your Xbox, and now even your PC. And for our listeners, you can get a free 15-day two-disc trial. That's a $22.95 value. What you do is you go to our website podcast page, which is www.beautyandthebeast.com, and you click on the Game 5 banner. Ari Shafia and myself are going to be doing the House of Blues. House of Blues Thursday, is November 8th. Here's the story. There's maybe 60, 65 tickets available. We're 20 days away if you're lucky. Nah, 10 and 8, that's 18. Something We're maybe like that. fucking something like that, 16 days. This is going to sell out. Don't come crying to me later on that you didn't get tickets. Why we didn't add an extra show? We can't add an extra One show. It's the fucking House of Blues. So get your shit together. Go to the website and it's order for everybody. the Live Nation. And get well, I got to get on those posters and make those posters. <clears throat> you don't need to make no posters. Just sell the fucking tickets. <laughs> I always like Let's that, sell right? Sell the fucking tickets, all right? <laughs> yeah. You're going to make posters. I'm now. like, I'm going to make a website. You don't oh, need to make no website. Oh, it's going to be a great <laughs> poster. I got to get them printed up. We're going to have 50 of them. It's going to be fucking Picasso and shit. It's only sold, not available online, only That's there. Right. So only okay. there with wow. the posters there. That would be such a great show to see you yeah, too. We'll yeah. yeah. This is a cute place. I saw it a couple of weeks ago. It's very sharp. Um, we're gonna have a good time. We got some good food. Everybody's there. bringing Weaver. Everybody. Reefer. Giant smoke party Listen, afterwards. I heard that some guys from down south Chicago bringing a chick to kill on stage. <laughs> the whole <laughs> fucking thing is that type of party. We're gonna fucking check with that swordfish. Duncan was just there. And he said they were crazy. Oh really? Duncan said the owner is Zane. He said to him, "There must be a full moon out there. There's a lot of crazy people out there." Nope. And he goes, "They were mixed with a bunch of white hairs." Duncan said it was hysterical to see that squad people. Know. With a couple oh, blue hairs. Really? He said it was just a lot. <laughs> tourists, because uh-huh. that's who goes to Zanny's downtown. Right. It's tourists. Uh huh. And he goes, know here's all these fucking hippies with books and devil fucking tattoos. <laughs> the, uh, the owner, the manager, Carlos, he said he had this poor guy sweating. Just <laughs> the second night, he finally understood what he said. He goes, you know, there's just too many crazy people here. Right. <laughs> this is they don't know what it's yeah. like. They don't know what it's like. Wow. They really don't know. Everybody, Chicago, people, groups go and, like, before the shows and after the shows, they'd all break, break off. And they'll just hang out and do their own shit, do whatever drugs that they didn't come down. They drink, they tip. Everyone's having a good, everyone has a crazy. good time. This they meet each no, other. I'm sure. It's going to be a great this time. Will this will be one of the big shows. Yeah. I'm happy that we're doing this. Then I'm done. I got to sit at home for two fucking months while my wife has the babies. So. Oh, yeah. We should do a whole weekend with you there. Way to Chicago. Yeah, it'd be fun, but one day it'll be great anyway. Yeah, that's all you need. We're leaving at six in the morning. Where are we gonna eat? You know, we're gonna I eat. I got my upgrades. Gonna make yet. a video about what to eat. Did you get your upgrades yet? Fuck no. You get your upgrades. I don't want you sitting in the back like some dude from Expedia. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> told me what flights to take. 
American Airlines, yeah, six American. to one, we're we'll all even together. Okay. No drama, you know what I'm saying? You and that's all me. the information <clears throat> you're going to get. <laughs> Where are we going to eat? Where are we going to eat? Where's the place to eat in Chicago? Who knows? When we get there, we'll tackle that problem. We're going to start <laughs> being looking around. Why do you even the, ask that? Through the encyclopedia. I'm you excited. When I go somewhere, do you have a, a food city? I get excited. I'm going to tell you how it real tells me where to go. I Philadelphia. I know this. I think I told Felicia this. What? When I left New Jersey, I knew I was never coming back. I said, I'm never fucking coming back. I've had it. I got on a plane and I was headed to Colorado Springs. I was going to fly to Denver and catch a connecting flight that night to Colorado Springs. And on the plane, a guy talked me out of Colorado Springs. Oh, on the thank plane? the Lord. He talked me into moving to Boulder. Yeah. And my life was... I made my Altered decision forever. on that fucking plane. Wow. So me and you sit here like two mooks, like I did. And in Planet. those days, you had to get an encyclopedia. Yeah. And look at Colorado Springs and read the population and the altitude. And mm-hmm. Put up with all that bullshit. So you want me to go home right now after we do this You're beautiful right. podcast, get online to see where to eat. You're right. But on the plane, we might meet a fan of yours. So, oh, here's he where you're going to eat. a fucking steakhouse. And he'll go, come and eat a steak. And a lobster tail, like so. You following me? Oh yeah. You live by the tail. We like the grateful dead. You're a Jew hippie. When are you gonna accept that? You're uh-huh. the next beatnik. Look at you. You got a fucking beard. You got glasses. Yeah. You got the long hair. You're like a revolutionary. It you're is like kind of true. Castro you are very revolutionary looking. The only people that ever offer me is people who own nightclubs. That's it. So that's what you're about. Yeah, like, steakhouses. Yeah. Nobody, Where are they coming through? That. Nobody Drug dealers, where are they museum? coming through? You don't need drugs. We got steaks. Movie baby. theater owners, how about that? We're going to the Midwest. Well, when you get a 20-ounce steak, yeah. it's better than Viagra. It's like a finger in the ass, a blowjob, <laughs> and a blowtorch to your fucking right toe. You understand me? So don't worry about it. We're going to eat when we get there. If anybody knows what to eat in Chicago, email us at... Beauty and the Beast podcast at gmail.com. There you go. That's how we do it. I can't believe I got it right. There you go. <laughs> right on it, too. You oh, pointed that and you nailed it off. She's a badass bitch. Sounded like you pushed a button. She don't even know her superpowers. I know her. <laughs> she went to a trance. No fucking You know what she was saying. Beauty and the Beast podcast at gmail.com. Uh-huh. Thank you very much, Ari Sophia, for You're coming welcome. on. You're welcome. It's fun. And you're going to Alaska this week. I'm going to Alaska like the silly girl that I am. I'll be in some Air Force bases all around uh, Fairbanks or, and Anchorage. You know, here's the thing. When I travel, mm-hmm. I don't like to read up on it because I, I, I get too much anxiety. It's like and when it happens, it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. What um When does this come out? Uh, Friday, hopefully. I'll be in Portland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to? Where are you at in Portland? Helium. Helium, bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Sell that motherfucker around. There's a guy yeah. waiting for him with a box of mushrooms that he, got he's got. After that. He, had, he killed his mother, <laughs> killed the cow, and put him on top of that, on top of that with mushroom, <laughs> with cow shit. You understand me? And they're glowing under fucking thing. They've been under his mother for a year and a half. So bring me a fucking shroom Sunday back. Okay, to shroom Sunday. I go straight from there to New York. You know, I've never did me. mushrooms. That's what? That's yeah. What Preposterous. Yeah, yeah I've never once done we get mushrooms. Back, How dare you? Yeah. Would you be open to it? Oh, I would like yeah. to try it once, but I'd have to. It'd have to, you know. Be with some beautiful people. Yeah. Lock your kids yeah. in the crate in the yeah. garage. Right. Make sure, <laughs> make sure they're safe. <laughs> Yeah. We'll, we'll party here. We'll throw you in the pool. We'll heat the pool. Just come up. camping with us next time we we'll do it. Okay. We'll oh yeah, cities. this backyard would be great. Yeah. This okay. Be great. No, you don't want too many people the first time. Oh, no. Really? How many you, people? You, your boyfriends, and that's it. Maybe Wendy Brazil. Yeah. yeah. No, you want to do three or four people that you really, oh, yeah. really no, like? No, 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 that'd no. Be okay. Oh really? No, what yeah, happens? Yeah. You just see everything glowy, right? You start thinking about stuff different. Start thinking about stuff. Yeah. And, and, what, and you don't know you laugh you, you laugh yeah. oh, really? you might come in here and look at Mustang and just yeah. think it's the coolest fucking thing even though you've looked at it a thousand so times something yeah. 45 minutes I'll come in here where you been Felicia Joey close the door look at that yeah yeah Jeez, Mustang wow my friends did him in, in, a, in a casino in Vegas Pete Carboni and Moses Robinson and uh Pete said Moses was laughing at a video poker machine they had wandered <laughs> off he came up to him he was laughing at a, and, and he was what are you laughing at because Pete didn't understand what's funny. And, much, and and Moses goes, look. And Pete looks at the video poker machine for like five seconds. And then he just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they both just started laughing. Wow. Wow. All right. And then, well. Can I say this? This is what Justin tells me to say. If you go to my website, aritthegreat.com, I'm giving you four free tracks off my album. On the right, there's a thing you can fill out. And I'll email you four free tracks. Let me ask you something. What? Your album was number one. It was what number the fuck one. They wanted now for. Where were they four weeks ago? They're too poor to avoid it. Don't they give don't know dick. about it. Where were you four weeks ago when he needed you and he was number one? 
Now you want to give them four tracks for what? They, don't, they already got the album. It was number one. Where were you then? When they Where were they then? That's right. They Where were they then? Well, the whole album for sale. No, the album is great. Go to Ari the Great. What's the name of the webpage? Ari the Great dot com. Ari the Great dot com and get your shit together. Four free tracks right now. There you go. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Felicia. Thank Good you, luck, Joey. Thanks, Felicia. And me and Felicia will be at the Ontario Improv, November second and third. Four shows, seven and nine. Call oh, cool. for tickets. Nine oh nine. Go online and get the rest of the number in your own time. <laughs> right? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Joey D is here. I love you guys. Stay black. Thank you, Ari. Bye.